I all been here from East West. Um, I haven't done an analysis video for quite a long time, so I thought I'd just I've just been looking at some interesting stuff here with CCJ. So I thought I might just whack this together and um, see what sort of reception I get. Whether or not I keep doing this, I don't know. There's not much benefit in it for me, other than to maybe try to help people. I'm certainly not getting anything out of it. Other than to maybe try to shed some light uh, for people, maybe show them something new that they didn't uh, previously look at. Um, and if I can do that, then I sort of get my reward. So I do put some charts out on Twitter. And a lot of the time, you, you might be thinking, oh, you're overly bearish. You, you're always sort of calling it to go down. Why? Well, I'll just start here. Let's just look at a couple of things. Um, and we'll go through them. So I'm just going to do some simple stuff here. So the black line here is the 200 day moving average, the green line is the 100. So right now as it sits, we're above both of those. Obviously we spent uh, 2022 chopping above and below as we went through a big sideways correction. But is that over? I think that's what everyone wants to know. Well, you know, as things sit, we're above those averages. That's, that's not a bad thing. Next, I'm just going to bring in a fixed range volume profile and I've taken this off the bottom it doesn't really matter where you take it because it's all going to tell you more or less the same thing but here I've just taken it off the bottom of the 2021 um, low here which is the first sort of uh, other than here you could take this back you could take this back to here from the absolute low you're still going to get a similar point of control and you know, it's it's very obvious where the support currently lays. Just through this sort of, the point of control remains just just below twenty two dollars, and you know, obviously down to this sort of twenty dollar area. That that is the that's where the buying's been done. I mean, uh, you can tighten this back up to here, and obviously, the tighter you get on it, the more pronounced that that zone becomes. But we know that that's where the volume this is where this the, the demand is this between this 22 and 20 bucks we you know that okay that's that's other than this one dipsy do down here start of january um down to 18 um you know th this has been the area that's held for more or less a year and then just keep it simple look at the trend line when well, we had a really nice bounce off here just down here in deck that you know you've got one two three very very precise touches that that's a very very good uptrend i mean you, you can sort of make the same sort of argument here uh and if this high doesn't break does that come up and test that we don't know yet of course but you know big picture we've got a very nice uptrend we've got the market above its averages we've got a very good uh range of support that it's held why would i not think that it's just going to go further up well, in short, it might do. Maybe the correction is actually over and we're, we're on the way. But I, I don't think so. And, and I'm going to make the case as to why I think that's so. So this has been my Elliott Wave count for a while. I've moved it around a few times, but I've sort of been sticking with this for for, for a period now. And, and what I'm, I am expecting is I'm just expecting one more downturn before we go up so i think what we've got is uh, i'll just remove this we're looking at an a wave then we've got this choppy corrective uh, b wave that i don't think is quite finished yet and then we go up and get the c wave so I, that's what i'm expecting now why am i expecting that well apart from the way that this is shaped and you know the there's many ways to skin the cat you, you you'll be able to find analysts that do it differently uh i've this is just the way i've counted it because i think this is sort of how it's working out that we've we've had a a w we've gone up for an x and now we're in the process of putting in the y so that's great but why would i think that well when i look back i found something quite interesting um that the, to show you in history what i'm expecting to happen so I just hide that. So what I'm actually looking to happen is we scroll back through the chart here. This, this is exactly what I'm kind of anticipating is going on. 
that we've come up like this we've just got to do this and then we'll go up again like that okay so just for argument's sake even though I think you've got to be very very careful in doing this we'll grab a fractal so you know the saying goes that uh, history may not repeat but it often rhymes so let's just take this back over to the, the hard right edge of the chart so what I'm kind of thinking is that this might actually line up better on a weekly but what I'm kind of thinking is that what we're seeing I just think that that's kind of lining up like that let me take this to a weekly so this year this is what I'm thinking is repeating and I just think that maybe we just need to do this so to line this up I think we're kind of more probably about here something like that that that's kind of what I'm expecting in an Elliott wave sense okay so in terms of the similarities between what we can see here I, I mean it's hard to say I kind of think that here wherever this finishes is kind of like kind of like this bit here that, that's what I'm kind of thinking is going on and that we've just we just need to do this Okay, before we go up again that that's I, I'm not making any comment on the timing you can see this is the end of 2024 I'm not saying anything like that I'm just talking about the shape of what I, I think is going on here all right so to put these together I think what we've got here the way I've counted is is one two here like that and then um, this is one two so that's that that same kind of movement then I think we've got I've counted this as the third wave and then I think with this one uh, this is a little bit trickier the third wave actually ends somewhere around about here when you go back and through it and, and how you work it out uh, but nonetheless there's that same sort of extended long run up then the way I've counted this is we came down here for a wave I'll just grab that till we came down here for a wave four retracement and it's 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 much more minor in here um, but then we came up and got wave five so I counted this I actually counted this up as a uh, an ending diagonal that came up here and got wave five up like that so we we can't we got wave five there and then we just had this much smaller wave five up like that so I actually finished this impulse here because this whole section through here okay th this is all I don't think you can call this anything other than corrective because it's there's so choppy and there's so much overlap there's nothing nothing really there it's not a diagonal same thing with this I mean this is actually has still has the the, the potential to be like a triangle um, but this was not this was just a corrective this is an up move but it's not impulsive it's corrective but the point being is that through all this section we did have all this chop in in the same way that through through here that we've we've had the, the the same chop okay it's just a similar sort of pattern but it's it's a little bit different but I could be wrong but I just I just think that we just got this one more tail down in us okay and I just think that maybe I'm not saying that we're going to go as deep as what this did but I just think once again I just think that here is potentially potentially here okay and that we're just going to come come down that we're just going to come down like actually it'll probably come down to three it might only come back down to that sort of $20 mark that we were talking about rather than falling as far as this did okay but let's just clean this up and have a look so this this was quite a lovely move technically because when you look at it if you take it just from the top to the bottom and once again this is the impulse and you, you would call this a big flat correction but just taking it from high to low you can see we came right back into the retracement zone and then if you just take the length of this whole up move and then take it off that we just ticked over the hundred okay now I'm kind of anticipating that something similar is, is is looking to happen here but even if we just took this even if we just came back to this this sort of 50 to you know just if we just get some sort of splash down here 
just into this zone and then we can think about think about maybe you know the next impulsive move up that it's just kind of it's just kind of how the market's shaping up to me I think now what would that mean now this is all just sort of hearsay and sorcery but let's just say for argument's sake uh, that okay let's just say that we did that things did turn out that way and that we did in fact come down to sort of this zone and then what would that mean well I would anticipate rather than actually a wave three I've actually think this is this is an a wave this is some sort of b wave but if we were just going to do the same thing that we've done here well, you know maybe we get a hundred percent maybe we can reach up towards sort of forty dollars so if if I was counting five waves up if you know in the in the future if I saw five waves up like that towards that sort of area I'd be pretty wary about taking profit I would think if I'd if I'd been a long-term holder that that would be my view uh, but of course once again maybe like I said history doesn't necessarily re repeat but it often rhymes so we, there's nothing to say that we actually will come down in, in some sort of fashion like this let me just quickly clean this chart up I've been looking at the possibility that this is actually um, a triangle which which would have completed um, so we can see here that even though if you sort of put the, the lower C there you might even have to it's a bit of conjecture as to where C should go either way that you know you could make the argument that we've got a contracting pattern here and that if, if it is a contracting uh, pattern in the Elliott wave sense that the triangle would be complete so we wouldn't really know we wouldn't be anticipating that until we were able to break through here so there's a lot of water to go under the bridge I, this is just in the background for me it's it's not my primary my primary still remains sort of this that even though this can go a little bit further but when you look at this if when you come down here I mean this this kind of looks this this little bit here does look uh, pretty impulsive it does look like we've got a one two three four sort of five waves going in there that's kind of what it looks like to me at this stage something like that um, so if that's an impulse well that could mean that our C wave here is done which finishes off the X uh, and that means that we'll be ready to come down and in three what three bigger waves like like we sort of got here um, that we would possibly come down to just just test down to this this value zone just one more time one more time before we before we launch and that would complete the bigger B wave okay so we are on the daily here we are running pretty hot on some of these indicators uh, this is actually Cutler's RSI so it's a little bit different but you know that I think you'll find if you look at it on a traditional RSI we, we are starting to diverge we're pretty strong it, it just does feel like the market's ready to just come off a little bit but whether or not the general stock market does is, is another question there's a lot of people have gone bullish anyway I just thought I'd whack that together real quick that's just how I'm viewing Cameco at the moment I you know obviously I can I could be wrong um, plenty of people out there will tell you that I am um, but that's just my view so hopefully that gave you a bit of food for thought um, thanks for watching